it has been so long since I've done a sat down video. I have had a crazy year. I graduated from Trinity in October and I graduated from Columbia in May. I've finally completed the dual BA program, which is crazy. I had such an amazing four years. I I'm aware of how late this video is for anyone who is applying to the dual BA like for 2023. I was very much hoping to do this video like way before this, but I still hope that if anyone's applying in 2023, which is like two days time or something, I hope this video will still come in handy. Maybe it will help for any last minute um, changes to your essay. We shall see. And um, maybe it'll also be helpful for later down the line with the interview, things like that. But this video is very much focused on the essay. I get a lot of questions about the essay and the dual BA program application, so I knew I wanted to do this video at some point. I'm also going to look back on the essay that I submitted back in 2018, which will be quite hilarious. Looking at my essay will be an interesting reflection on my dual BA experience as lots has changed since then and like I've grown as a person yada yada but also I hope it will be helpful for you as you're writing your essay to see what I did and what I would change now about it. So yes yeah, stay tuned for some dual BA application essay tips and for a little reading of my 2018 application essay. I have a list of tips here that I've gathered from back when I applied, from when from when I've talked to students over Instagram DM, sometimes I have proofread some essays. So these are all very much derived from past experience with writing my own essay, looking at other essays in the years since I applied. So the essay hasn't changed since I applied, as far as I'm aware. It, um, it still is. Describe how your experiences, both personal and academic, have shaped your decision to pursue the dual BA program. Why is an international academic experience important to you as you consider the ways in which it may influence your future? 750 to 1000 words. And when I applied, I had to do two essays, um, but as far as I'm aware, now there's only one essay, which is this question, which I've just read out. One of the most important things you have to do when writing an essay is research. Research, 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 research. Find out as much information possible about the Jewel Bay program. When I applied, it was a very new program. There was not that much information out there. But since then, since 2018, now lots of students have gone through it. There are other YouTube channels that, um, have, like not just mine, that, that talk about the Jewel Bay program. I highly recommend. I'm gonna link a few channels and things that might be helpful below. Make sure you know not just about the two universities in general, but just about what resources each university has that will be helpful to you as a student. So I'll get back to that later. A very practical thing you need to do is to look at the question, like, and treat it like an essay in an exam or an essay you're doing for an assignment. Look at the words, underline the words, like fully understand and digest the question itself. Describe how your experience, both personal and academic. They are two key words for this application. Um, it's not just about your life story, it's not just about your academics, about, it's about both. I think one really helpful thing to remember is that when you're applying for the dual BA, you are able to also submit your CV or resume. And that I think is something that you should do first, make your CV resume, and then from that you can build out your essay. So if you've already made your CV or resume, make sure you refer back to it when writing out your essay, not just so you don't forget anything, but also so that they align well, because in the interview later in the process, you will be drilled on your essay and your CV. Like anything you mention, they could ask about. And that's another reason to be very truthful in your application. So you could be quizzed on it. And that sounds a bit mean, but I don't mean quiz. They're gonna try and catch you out. It's more that like, they wanna to get to know you more in the interviews. So anything you say in any part of the application, they may wanna, you know, expand on in the interview. So just remember that. So personal academic keywords, how they've shaped your decision your decision to pursue the dual BA program. It's a very personal essay, but academic is a word that some people forget. And in the essay, you are focusing on the course you're applying to. So one really helpful thing that some students have done when writing essays is they talk about what they want to do with their subject at Trinity and then what they what want to do with their subject at Columbia. For me, as an English student, I was doing English at Trinity and then English at Columbia. So I didn't really need that structure, but sometimes um, some of the courses in the dual BA do change once you transition into the other university. For example, um, Middle Eastern languages and cultures, is that? Middle Eastern and European languages and cultures, that's the name, um, changes in, you, there are many pathways of different subjects you can take at Columbia after you take that course at Trinity. So rem remember to keep that in mind. The next key words are international academic experience. International, I said this in my original video where I talk about the dual BA application process. It's very important. You are applying to two universities in two different cities. It's a very weird, unique program. And there's not many programs out there that do that, allow you to do that. So that word international is so important. 
why do you want to study in two different cities? Why would it benefit you? Why do you want to go to two institutions instead of one in four years? So the question is, how, why is an international academic experience important to you? Always, always link back everything you say to yourself. There's no point in saying that this, there's this amazing resource at Columbia unless you say why it's important to you. You have to think about what elements of the dual pay program will meet your needs as a student. So the end of the question is, um, as you consider the ways in which it may influence your future. So you're probably 18 years old applying to the dual pay program. It's hard to know what your future is gonna in entail, absolutely. But it's still really, really beneficial if you can give some kind of idea of what you would like your future to be like. Um, I'll get to my essay later, but in my essay I mentioned that I was interested in maybe being a journalist or a writer. Um, that's changed a little bit. I still love writing, so it's not completely gone out of the picture, but that doesn't matter. You don't, you can't predict your future completely at the age of 18. So what's important is that you think about what interests you now, where you could see yourself in the future, and what steps you need to take to get there. And why the Jewel BA is what you need to get to that point in your life. You have to show the admissions team this is the only viable option for you to achieve your dream career. So the next section of tips may be um, too useful for anyone that's already written the essay and maybe wants help with structure and um, sentence structure and how to actually, you know, articulate your ideas because all your ideas are probably there, you know, you know that this program is right for you. But sometimes it's about making an essay that's cohesive and um, reads like a story and makes sense and that's what the next few tips might be helpful for. One of the things I've said to students so many times, um, whether that's just my advice in Instagram DMs or from proofreading essays, be specific. If you are claiming something, for example, I love reading, you know, if you're applying for the English uh, dual BA uh, program, if, if you do, then tell me more, give examples. So it's always valuable to name books you've read, to name classes you might have taken in school, um, to name professors you'd be interested in working in, but always do these things with purpose. Don't just drop names, don't just randomly say, oh, I read the Odyssey at age 12. Why? Why did you read the Odyssey at age 12? You know, and what did that lead to? You know, why did that lead to your interest in studying English University? Make sure to link everything together and that you're not just randomly dropping facts about yourself. It still has to be some kind of narrative. But one important thing to remember when being specific about these things, you know, giving examples of your past academic and then your future academic interests, Stay on track of the question. Remember the key words, which include being talking about your personal and academic journey, why an international experience is important to you. So don't just mention different things you've done in school and before, or different things you've done in your community for the sake of it. Link it back to the questions. For example, you could say, when I was in school, I was in student council and I really wanted to make a difference. And after going abroad for a um, language program in the summer of whatever, I realized how valuable experience it would be to learn um, this language, whatever language it is, and apply it to my interest in politics so that I can gain more experience in uh, politics in other countries, things like that. So a really handy way to structure things is what you've, you, what you've already done, um, what you're interested in now, and what that might lead to in the future past, present, future, right? This also relates to the be specific advice, but don't just describe the program. The admissions team know all about the program. They know, they know probably more than you could ever know about it. So no need to describe the unique aspects of the Jubilee program unless you relate it to yourself. So again, you might mention that the core curriculum is something that you're interested in because and link it back to yourself. Something that students sometimes forget, accidentally, is that you should talk about Trinity and Columbia equally. There is a chance you may be more interested in one university than the other, that's okay, but make sure in the essay that it doesn't come across like that. It could come across the admissions team that you're actually more interested in one university than the other and that they might think, oh, well, this person actually just wants to go to this university. They're not gonna value their time at X university as much. So spend equal amount of time talking about each university. Expanding what I said earlier about, you know, making sure there's a story to your essay and that you should think about, you know, what you've done in the past, what you're doing now, and what you want to do in the future. There are three different things to think of. For every sentence, even if you don't, you know, refer to all three things, past, present, future, in one sentence, that's fine, you don't need to. Always make sure a sentence serves a purpose, right? It's still an essay. Every paragraph should have a topic sentence, like what is this paragraph about? And when I say things like, the essay should have a narrative, it should be a story. It does not need to have fancy language. It's not a creative writing exercise. So don't worry about having the most beautiful descriptions. Important to be 
biographical and reflective and to balance those two things. So you're providing information, but it's written in a way that seems like a nice arc. Like there is still a story to it. Like I began here, you know, my interest in this subject began at this point. It's led me to apply to this program and I hope this program can lead me to this point in the future. There's a story to it, but it's not like it has to be a Shakespearean extravaganza of language. I say that, but please don't neglect your style. Everyone has a unique writing style. No one else can write your essay other than you. So if you may as well write in your true voice. So remember as you're getting your essay proofread by teachers, by parents, everything, that you need to have your voice there still, even if, you know, sentence structure's improved, things like that. Make sure that you still feel that it's your own work because at the end of the day, you're going to be the one sitting in the interview. So yeah, I hope you found that helpful. Um, I'm going to read my essay um, <laughs> now. Um, I hope that there will probably be some tips that arise from this as well. So definitely stay tuned for this part of the video. It will be quite a time. Oh my god. Uh <laughs> So thinking back to when I wrote this essay, I remember a big focus for me was structuring the essay in terms of my interest in Irish and American literature. Even before reading it, I know how much my literary interest has changed. I still love Irish literature and American literature, or like the, of the writers I mentioned in this, but since going to university and having four years of reading many other authors, my interests have definitely changed and broadened and narrowed, if that makes sense. So like, you know, I got to, I was exposed to many more writers and then I found out what my real interests are and I was able to hone in on that. But for now, let's, uh, let's read this. <laughs> I will probably comment on it as I read it because um, I'll probably have some reactions as we go. Growing up in Dublin, physical and spiritual proximity to the great Irish literary tradition has excited, excited and inspired me. We read and studied O'Casey, Montague and Heaney at school, but my own exploration brought me to Joyce and Wilde, J.P. Dunleavy and Elizabeth Owen. As well as reading their work for enjoyment, I have connected to the Ireland of the past and seen how much my country has changed. I particularly love finding the controversial or once forbidden prose, the topics that challenge the mores and social norms of the day, it is a real insight to the different Irelands of the writer's times. So I like that paragraph, it gets straight to the point of you know, my interest in Irish literature. It shows, you know, what I've done in the past. I studied O'Casey and Montague and Heaney and my own exploration. It's always great to show your interest in independent research. My own exploration brought me to Joyce and Wilde, J.P. Dunleavy and Esme Bowen. They're authors I never did at school. The part where I mentioned I love finding controversial or once forbidden prose, I don't give examples, but that sentence in itself, it's a specific part of Irish literature that allows, in the interview, if they want to ask me about it, allows them to ask me what Forbidden prose you're interested in, and I talk about you know the Gingerman, which is a book by um, J.P. Dunleavy that I read um, that I think had some censorship rules around it, from what I remember. So you don't always have to be super super specific. You can mention something that has more content in it itself if they want to ask you about it in the interview. At a Trinity Open Day in 2015, I heard Professor give a hugely entertaining lecture on Yeats, his unique worldview and connection to supernatural, his creativity coupled with the beauty of his language. There and then I decided I had to study English at Trinity College and this has been my goal of studies ever since. So that is an example of being, being specific. Um, I can pinpoint a time in my life where I thought to myself, I really want to study English and it was at a specific event I went to in Trinity with a talk by a specific, specific professor. I just didn't mention his name, but he is named. While I do love Irish writing, my other great literary heroes have been Sylvia Plath and Edna St. Vincent Millay. Platt's victory in the bell jar opened my eyes to how much more powerfully symbol and metaphor can be used to communicate complex ideas in motion. The love sonnets of Vincent up end the idea of women having less power in a relationship. They are serious fun. <laughs> These American writers have sparked my interest in modern American writing from Salinger to Steinbeck and Kerouac. So again, these are authors that I didn't really study in school um, that I wanted to show that I have done some reading outside of my school curriculum. Yeah, again, these are American writers. So here's the structure coming in if I opened with my interest in Irish writing and how I was interested in going to Trinity anyway. And here's my interest in American writing. So that's kind of the story I'm going with. And the next sentence brings together how this all combines in for my interest in the Jewel BA. So when I heard about a Jewel BA at Trinity in Columbia, I was eager to learn more. Would this academic program be even more closely aligned to my specific interests and passions? I like this segue. Um, I'm not sure if I do a question like that again, but sometimes I just spell it out and say, like, use the language of the question. Like, this is, you know, this is what I want to do 
this aligns with my future aspirations, all that kind of thing. I've compared the pedagogic philosophies of the two universities. While there is a similarity between Trinity tutorials and Columbia small seminars, there is a difference in content and concentration. It seems that the first years at Trinity will have exclusive focus on English, while the second years at Columbia will include a broader liberal arts education. So I'm just mentioning something that the, the admissions team will already know, but now I'm about to say why this specific thing about the program is important to me. In terms of timing and content, this is really interesting to me. As well as English, I excel at history, religious studies and French at school. I have a gold medal in speech and drama. <laughs> this is when I show off, guys. I'm on the French debating team. I love Italian opera. <laughs> I would be enthusiastic about returning to a broad study of humanities in two years' time. A broad education is attractive in itself, but there is also, in my view, a firm link between the study of English and the study of history, philosophy and the arts. I feel this paragraph is good, but I still think I could be more specific in some ways and I could, I mentioned things that I've done in the past, but I still feel like to really tie the paragraph together, I could also mention what I'm interested in doing in the dual BA now because of the broad curriculum and like what I want to do in the future. I love the idea of an education literature that connects the two cities. Here's the core connection for mentioning Irish writing and American writing. In the heart of Dublin city and in Manhattan, I would be surrounded by the histories and the cultures that cultivated the writing of my heroes. On a recent visit to New York, a specific example of a personal experience. On a recent visit to New York, I found Malay's narrow home and Chumming speakeasy, which was frequented by poets and novelists during Prohibition. This kind of experience enriches my personal connection with these writers. The Jewel BA would be an opportunity to live within the context that is the key to understanding the writers and the writing of the two cities. I want to dig deeper into Irish writing and explore more American literature. I want to make connections between them and connections between the two countries. I am fascinated with the prospect of being taught Yeats again by blank professor at Trinity, then attending lectures by professor on American fables and tales. I am intrigued by the possibility of enrolling in a Columbia course on Irish literature taught by Colin Toby, and I will mention his name because it is amazing now, having finished a Dolby, that I actually did get to do a class with Colin Toby, and so that was great. I did a class on Ulysses with him, so I'm just going to drop his name. Or American literary realism taught by blank professor. So yes, that paragraph, I mention a bunch of professors, but there's a reason for it. I don't just say I'm interested in working with this professor and don't elaborate on it. I mention these professors because these are professors that are doing classes that are interesting interesting to me because they're on Irish writing and American writing. That's kind of how I tie it all together. So I'm not just dropping names, I'm tying it back to the larger narrative. I already know and love Dublin well, of course. I used to think that this would be the only place I would ever live. But I've learned that change of place reinvigorates. <laughs> I am attracted to the possibilities of two years in New York. Steinbeck said, once you've lived in New York and it has become your home, no place else is good enough. I'd like to test that theory out. Oh, yeah, I do miss New York, um, but it's, uh, you know, it really is a unique place. And I think it's so crazy that I wrote that. Like, you know, I said that Dublin, I used to think Dublin would be the only place I'd live, but now I get the chance to live in New York. You do, Jane, you get, you get to live in New York. Here's my last paragraph. In The Catcher in the Rye, Salinger wrote, I think that one of these days you're going to have to find out where you want to go and then you've got to start going there. Right now I can see myself as a writer or a journalist, but I do not want to hold myself back from exploring all the possible choices I could make with an English degree. So earlier I said, it's so hard to know what you want to do at 18 years old. This sentence gives me room to like, you know, explore many career options in the dual BA, but I st still wanted to be specific and say, I am interested in writing and I am interested in journalism. But you don't have to say I'm going to be a doctor by age 25, but still give some kind of idea as to where you think your future is going to, going to go. My academic aspiration is to be able to independently and critically think, analyze and research. I believe these skills that I would develop studying literature and Columbia's core will be the key to any future that I choose to pursue one of these days. That was me quoting Salinger again. To me, the study of English is the most holistic education. It is an education not just in literary style and form, but in compassion, in history and in opening one's mind. It would be the stepping stone to help me find out where I want to go and, and to quote, start going there. So yeah, that was my Julia essay. Um, I hope that gives some insight into you know, how you can structure your essay. I think I did it pretty well there. I still would make some changes, but that's just because I am now, you know, 22, doing a master's. I've evolved since my 18 year old self, but that essay got me into the program. As well as, you know, recommendation letters, my grades and my interview. So it's not just the essay. And remember that, you know, remember as you're doing the essay that it's not just 
this part of the application that's getting you in. There are other parts of the application that will help you. I'm excited for you if you're applying for the Jewel BA. Please remember that the application process is a learning curve. Don't see it as a waste of time. It never is. I actually applied to Oxford before I applied to the Jewel BA back in 2017 and I didn't get in. And I remember thinking, oh, you know, that's not great. But then I thought, actually, I learned a lot from that because I realized how much I love English. And then I found out about the Jewel BA. So it all works out. But yeah, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. A big chatty one, but I hope you found the tips useful, especially if you're applying soon. I'm so sorry it was so last minute, but I hope nonetheless it helps you in some way. It's the end of 2022 as well, which is crazy. I am looking forward to 2023. I am still doing my master's in Oxford. You can keep up with me on my socials, on my Instagram and TikTok. I hope to do, I always say this, but I do hope to make more content on there. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and happy new year.